Hello, it's Weedon3976 here with the truth and stupidest people in politics. Today, Rush Limbaugh, oh, Herman Kane, and Phil Bryant. You don't know who Phil Bryant is? You will soon. And also, inequality in America is worse than you thought. A hard and honest look, folks, at what's really happening in this country. And uh, also, I have a few things to tell everybody, and that is the Supreme Court is ruling on whether or not a child, a 16 or 17 year old child that kills somebody, is eligible to be put in prison for life without parole. Yes, you heard me right. Whether or not a young child is uh, a teenager, basically, is fit to be punished like a grown man or a woman, whoever commits the crime. This will determine whether I have any shred of, uh, uh, of uh, respect left for that court. <sighs> whether it will hold up or not. So get ready, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a doozy today on the truth and stupidest people in uh, politics. Hello. Oh, Weed and Freak 976, the old truth teller here. The stupidest people in politics. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been a good week for me, bad week for America. Today on Stupidest People in Politics, we have Lieutenant Governor-elect Phil Bryant. We also have Herman Cain and Rush Limbaugh. So let's get right to it. Now everybody knows about Proposition 26, which if it had been, which was voted on yesterday, if it had been voted on in, in uh, personhood, it would have meant that basically the second the sperm hit the egg, you were uh, it was going to be a life form forming, and that could have caused all kinds sorts of things. Like, doctors could have been sued for murder or charged with murder. Uh, well, Phil Bryant said uh, Monday that Satan wins if voters reject an issue 26 that defines personhood at fertilization. But a young lady named Kristen Hemmons of Oxford, an opponent, attended with the event with four other anti 26 advocates. Hemmons, who was raped and shot twice, during a kidnapping uh, as a college student, asked Bryant, why can't you men have any sympathy for women like me? Bryant's response, uh, Bryant told her he is sympathetic for situations like her, but said he believes that the child has some rights too, even in this condition. Okay, you want to make a fetus a life form? Fine. And every time you shave, you should be charged with murder. Every time you uh, pick, a, pick a plant, you should be charged with murder. Every time somebody eats a burger, they should be charged with murder. Is that is this some slippery slope you want to go down on, Jack? Give me a break. Runner up, Herman Cain. At the Republican National uh, uh, Debate on CNBC, I think. Yeah, uh, oh, my uh, story from Mr. Bryant is from... NIMS360.com. Sorry, I usually tell everybody where I get my stories. The Los Angeles Times. Herman Cain on scandal at debate mocks Nancy Pelosi as Princess Nancy. <laughs> um, he calls uh, Herman Cain called uh, Nancy Pelosi Princess Nancy yeah, 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 during uh, the Republican uh, debate, and. <clears throat> He uh, also called out the, on the accusations, which he got drilled on repeatedly, bought uh, by four women um, engaged in sexual uh, misconduct while the head of the National uh, Restaurant Association in Washington more than a decade ago. False. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I value my character and my integrity more than anything. Else, Kane said, uh, adding that his supporters remained enthusiastic. Over the last nine days, Nachos got eat Nachos. I am corn Julio. The voters have voted with their dollars, and they're saying they don't care about the character assassination. Oh, excuse me. Uh, over the last nine days, the voters have voted with their dollars, boing, 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 and they say they don't care about that character assassination. Not jokes. He's got to watch him. Not to eat. Not jokes. They care about leadership and getting the economy going. Boing, 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 boing. To which uh, Newt Gingrich looked over him and said, Shut up, Harmon, dumbass. But the winner, ladies and gentlemen, not, you know who it's going to be. Fatso! Rush Limbaugh. Now, what's this about? Well, as you all have heard about old Herman Cain, or old Beavis as I like to think of him as, old Fatso got into it because he was pissed off at um, 
a single mom, Sharon uh, uh, Bialak, uh, but old Fatso goes a little step farther uh, on his radio show. Oh, and this is from Newsers. <laughs> Showing everybody where I got this. Uh, a blonde bombshell who was smiling as she worked with a recounted being sexually harassed. It's Bialak. As in Bialak, he said, making a slurping sound. There's no Y in the name, so you can't say it's Rentalik. Okay, Rush, we didn't need to uh, have um, you tell us recollections about your sexcapades with uh, every uh, $10 uh, uh, street, uh, street uh, madam you used to meet. And uh, so I guess now with that slurping sound, I guess we all know how you slurp down your drugs now, right? So, you know, that, 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 that's good to know, Rush. I mean, TMI for my taste, but you have a lot of fans out there. Your fellow stoned out uh, drug addict uh, uh, losers who uh, uh, want to pretend like there's nothing wrong with the economy and everything. And that there's nothing wrong with your pathetic ass. Rush Limbaugh, today's stupidest person in politics. <laughs> So Weed and Freak 976 here with the truth. And this one is about why inequality in America is even worse than you thought, how it affects our happiness, and some solutions that are given out by Salon on how we can fix this garbage. You know, when people say, what did Occupy Wall Street fighting for? And it comes from a lot of right-wing people, and you know, a lot of these people are middle or poor income, and I'm just sitting there like, you know what, those people are fighting for you. It's like you're sympathetic to the 1% who wants to stomp everybody out. Give me a break. That's absolutely lunar. I mean, what is it? I'm going to be a millionaire one day. No, you're not. Get a, a snap out of it. The 1% wants to keep you where you are. Anyway. Over the last 30 years, according to Salon.com, the from 1977 to 2007, the 1% of households, uh, their income increased by 275%, where the middle and lower, or the lower and middle went up 18 to 40%. Yeah. Okay, now from the uh, Bertelsmann Foundation, that's a German think tank, uh, analyzes to create a social justice index of 31 developed nations in the organization for economic cooperation and development. The United States came in a dismal 27th in the rankings. 27th. When it came to child poverty and how uh, we take, you know, how bad child poverty is, 28th. Only Turkey, Chile, and Mexico beat us out. My vote. Here are the top 10 countries with the worst income gap. This is from the Huffington Post. Uh, number 10 is New Zealand. Yeah, they're still reeling from their free market experiment. Now they're starting to get better off. Nine, Australia. Eighth, Italy. Seventh, the United Kingdom. Sixth, Portugal. Fifth, Israel. Fourth, the United States. Third, Turkey. Second, Mexico. And number one, Chile. Boy, this really blows the hell out of all those idiots who kept telling me Pinochet may have been a murderer and evil and stuff, but he saved Chile's economy. Bullshit only for the top, that is. Also, according to Salon here, um, they're talking about ways we can fix this garbage. And, you know, I mean, I know this is going to be kind of hard to do because we have a, a Republican-controlled House, not enough uh, people on, on the Democrat or Republican, especially Republican side, who will vote for those reforms. And we got a president who is either too scared to stand up to Wall Street or who just don't want to because he's paid off by them. So, um, but anyway, here are some, I think, yeah, um, well, before we get to that, here is a little bit, uh, on, the, on this, it, it, it tells more in here, I don't have enough time, but, uh, it tells, um, from low capital gains tax to stock buybacks, here are ways the elite measure, uh, ensure the markets benefit them. In other words, this is how they rig the system. A growing number of Americans suspect that the economic 
American economic system is rigged in favor of the rich and the um, merely affluent. That growing number of Americans is right. Uh, here are three ways many of the, the markets uh, want the con markets for compensation are rigged to benefit not only the top one percent but also the top ten percent of growing the a group that includes many well-paid professionals, financial sector compensation. By now, that phrase "too big to fail" has become synonymous uh, with its acronym TBTF. What needs to emphasize is that TBTF is the basis for the huge bonus paid to the elite American bankers who benefit from a government that uh, socializes their losses while allowing them to keep their profits. Okay. Um, Here's the business model. We uh, we place highly uh, leveraged bets, sometimes as much as 35 to 40 to 1. In return, the government uh, implicitly agrees to bail out our banks, and if we're fired, we negotiate sweetheart deals with golden uh, pensions. If we bet right, then our banks keep the windfall profits, and we get big bonuses. If we bet wrong, not to worry, the taxpayers will bail us out, uh, bail out our banks, and the government will pay for the cost of the bailout. By cutting Social Security and Medicare, suckers. See, this is a you know that it's that you just click on this button here and it, it tells a lot more. Uh, too much for <laughs> me to, to to really tell, but I just wanted to give one one you know area I wanted to tell you about. Uh, we need a corporate pledge of allegiance. If Romney and the GOP are going to insist corporations are people, companies should start by proving their patriotism. Hell yeah, if they're going to get money and they you know from the government. Then, by God, you should prove your patriotism by keeping jobs here, protectionism, you know, fair trade instead of free trade, and better uh, health insurance and, and uh, pay equality for our um, our people. It's not that much that we want, you know. And uh, yes, Romney, uh, corporations get people too. What if somebody please think of the corporations? Uh, when somebody breaks the law, what happens? They go to jail. Again, I said this, and I'll say it again. If a corporation breaks the law, their ass should go to jail. The people should, who work for them should. Who broke the law? Uh, older people getting richer, younger people getting poorer. Have you noticed how most of the Tea Party people were sort of old, while most of Occupy Wall Street seemed fairly young? Here's an interesting factoid from the USA Today: Old people are much richer than young people, according to a Pew Research Center. Americans 65 and older are 47 times richer than those 35 and younger. It makes sense that old people have more money than young people because they've been working and saving longer. But this wealth gap is massively by historical standards. In 1984, old people were a mere 10 times richer than young people. Not only have old people gotten richer since then, but the medium net worth households headed by young people has declined considerably. So, this 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 is an incredible article that I'm going to link below. Um, you should really read it. it. It's scary to think what is happening in this country. And we have to do something. I mean, you know, the, the Occupy Wall Street, excuse me, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Oakland and all of them are just a implosion of the anger that people were feeling, knowing deep in their gut something was wrong. And that we knew that we can't continue like this. We just can't. So do, like... Yes, there are steps to take. Also, take out money from your big bank and put it in a local bank. A lot of people are already starting to do that. If you haven't done it yet, do it. Tell these big companies they are not going to control us. Try not to buy products from the corporations as much as possible. Try not to shop at Walmart as much as possible. But see, that's why they also want to rig the system, Walmart and them. Which do you think they would prefer? I'll just say this real quick. I don't mean to get off track, but just think about it. Would Walmart and them prefer a society where there's a lot better pay and people have more money to spend and they're like, you know what, I don't really want to shop at Walmart. I would like to go to my local mom and pop shop. I want to support them. Or there's hardly any mom and pop shops around because healthcare costs are so high and uh, they can't pay good enough. These small businesses can't. And the few that do get to stay open, they barely get skin by by the skin of their teeth and people are worried that they'll close and they still have to charge higher, you know, then you're like, well, I don't like it, but I gotta shop at Walmart just to get by. See, they're, they're rigging the system so that way they own and control everything. That's what this is about, you know, and I know, I know I'm stating the obvious, but it's true. And really quick, this article here from Big Think, 
inequality makes us unhappy. I mean, have you noticed that? I mean, Canada owns more guns per people than America, yet there's a lot lower crime rate in Canada than there is in America. And I know Canada has got its own growing inequality gap problem, which I hope you guys get straightened out. I do. I got some friends who live in Canada, and I really feel for you guys. And now, you, you know, we we got we should look at this. There are countries that have more people, percentage-wise, who own guns than what we do. Yet we're more violent. Well, this article here kind of tells why, and it's that we feel depressed and everything and oppressed like we don't have a voice and we lose it and that's what is, has going on it's not blaming on the minorities as the right and the republicans want to say it's blaming on the inequality that is in this country that's who you blame it on okay and that's all that needs to be said about that i want you i want everybody if you haven't joined an occupy thing yet please do it but also, even if you don't join a protest, you can take those steps. Take your money out of the bank. Try not to shop at Walmart as much as you can. You know, there's things that you can do to help show these big companies you don't control us. Until you start showing your patriotism and stuff, you don't deserve our respect. You don't. You're not really American. All you care about is draining us dry. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, they know that is the truth.